today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a massive hurricane season outlook update. We have so much more information as it has been about a month since I've made one of these videos. Now, we're going to be talking about a lot of Trilogy Maps maps today. So if you want to check those out, we have a 50% off spring sale going on right now. That's going to be in the pinned comment and description down below. And you can make maps like this yourself. Also, you can use my code DIRECT for 33% more off. A lot of you have been utilizing that, and I can't blame you because it's an absolutely ridiculous deal going on, so don't miss out on that sale. Uh, now, as we take a look at this, this is gonna be just our region so that we're more familiar with what I'm gonna be talking about today. Gulf of Mexico, obvious. Uh, Caribbean, also obvious, but Southern Caribbean here is a lot different than this main Caribbean area. The Southern Caribbean area is actually a bit of a desert, so a lot of the islands here are much more dry than, let's say, uh, Cuba, Jamaica, the Bahamas, etc. Those areas are very, very tropical and, and are almost like rainforests in the amount of thunderstorms they see. Uh, but down here in the Southern Caribbean, it is very, very opposite of that. Very dry, in fact. And then we have our MDR here. This is called, this is basically short for our main development region. So that's what that stands for. And this is where most systems start their offshore of Africa. They make their way across this MDR area. And then they either go up here. They can kind of get suppressed down here. And usually they break up if they do that. Because again, it's like a desert. Or they can head into the Gulf. Or they can head OTS, which is out to sea. So as you can see, most of the time they start out in that MDR and then kind of branch out from that point. So that is why that area is so crucial because 75%, maybe maybe 60% plus storms start out at some point in this MDR. Again, OTS stands for out to sea. And then your east coast is obvious, anywhere offshore of the east coast there. Pretty much uh, west of Bermuda is going to be very different. If they go more towards Bermuda or, or further east than Bermuda, that is going to be considered out to sea. If it's west of Bermuda, that's going to be considered an east coast storm or east coast threat. It is going to bring impacts there. Now, I know that was long, but that's just necessary to kind of work our way through. <laughs> now, as we take a look at the temperature anomalies, the sea surface temperature anomalies forecast, we expect above average temperatures here near the coasts, which is going to be impactful because we could see some rapid development as these storms approach. We do have slightly below average waters that have been in place for a while now for the Southern Caribbean. This could change as this is a little bit outdated, this map that I drew. Uh, but in this kind of Southern MDR area, we do have above average waters as well. As we move on and we talk about the shear, we are experiencing an El Nino this year. This is becoming a very strong El Nino, in fact. And we're actually going to take a, look, a pretty long look at that later on in the video. We're going to have really new data coming in. Um, that is from basically today and yesterday. Some of it is from yesterday or the day before, but it's the, the last few days. We do expect increased shear in El Nino, so that is going to be a factor. This shear means that basically wind speeds are, are, are happening at different speeds throughout the layers. Uh, of of the lower levels here uh, basically where clouds and storms develop and what we're going to expect with that is sometimes we see the top taken off of these storms because things are moving so much faster at you know 15 20 25 30,000 feet that it can kind of really keep these storms from developing tall clouds which is a key key detail in intensification in these storms so that is a huge factor there uh, now, also in a La Nina, on the other hand, if we were to see a La Nina, which we don't expect, you would see decreased shear and basically more uh, or, or less hindrance of development throughout this area as storms move across. So we're going to be seeing a little bit more suppression because of this. Whether that leads towards actually below normal storms or not is, is less of a guarantee, but definitely this will hold back the potential, this factor. Now... As we take a look here at just the overall favorability, in my opinion, we're seeing pretty favorable conditions near near home here in the United States. The Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean here, and then the East Coast all seem to be more favorable. And really, the shear from the El Nino is only going to affect these lower areas. So any storms that try to develop here uh, in the Gulf off the East Coast, which is fairly common uh, in some circumstances, are not really gonna be impacted by that very much. So all of these things, including the above average sea surface temperatures and, and other factors, all lead me to believe that this is going to be the much more favorable area overall compared to normal. And the overall forecast looks like this. Most favorable is gonna be there in the Gulf of Mexico where I think things look extremely favorable. Above average development can be expected there in the Caribbean, especially, you know, from, from start to finish development, we might not see as many storms moving in from that MDR, 
but we could see a lot of homegrown systems here for the Caribbean. Above average chance for the East Coast, but the East Coast is never a guarantee. We see a lot more storms in the Caribbean and Gulf, obviously. The East Coast, if the if the jet streams aren't aren't really playing along, we may never even see storms move into this area. But if things do take aim at this region, there is a much uh, a higher chance of development here than what would be typical. Less invests and tropical cyclones really for the MDR starting out is, is what I would anticipate. Uh, a lot more happening outside of this area uh, in this area here. So we see kind of an up area here for the up kind of increased amount of storms. And then down below, we're going to probably see a below average amount. So where this lands between this area being above average and this area being below average is going to give us an idea of what to expect as far as the entire Atlantic hurricane season, if we're above average or below average. Uh, that is the big question. And I'm still, this is a preliminary forecast or outlook. So I really feel like we need more time to be able to estimate and see how things come together as we approach June, July timeframe. We're going to get a lot closer. And then by August, we need to have some sort of finalized thoughts. So the coming months are going to be interesting here in this hurricane season development. Now, as we move on to the charts, I just want to show you guys, this is all the new information. Everything I just showed you before has already been shown on the channel here, but I wanted to update you guys on our most up-to-date expectations here from direct weather. But as we take a look here at our actual data here, this comes from uh, tropicaltidbits.com, by the way, uh, where you can find all of this. We can see that this is for the Caribbean, the sea surface temperature anomalies, and we've been kind of near average here throughout the spring. And we've actually had a big surge and then drop off here and we're somewhere here now uh, through may but overall we're pretty far below uh, or above average as far as sea surface temperatures are concerned here in the caribbean thus far as we take a look at the actual whole atlantic we can see here that caribbean area there above average and then again the southern caribbean below average we do have some cooler waters here especially as you reach into the middle of the uh, kind of offshore of the East Coast, but when we look right offshore, we see, we still see far above normal temperatures. This has a lot to do with the warmer air that has been overhead for a long time over the course of the winter and the spring. These waters never really got as cold as they typically do, so that gave them a really, really warm head, head start this spring. And if we see any sort of hot weather come in, it is gonna really, really ramp up these sea surface temperatures for these areas. The Gulf remains above average, we'll take a look at it the chart in a minute and we can see the entire MDR now is above average so that has warmed over time and we're seeing a huge warming trend for this area which definitely could outbalance that negative shear or the above average shear that we're going to be expecting with the El Nino and bring us back towards maybe average development here in the MDR that would be interesting we've never seen an El Nino quite like this one uh, with the very warm Atlantic and if this stays this way through the hurricane season we better buckle up because I, I see this one being very interesting as we take a look at the entire uh, world here we can see this is that El Nino right there and it is becoming a rather uh, moderate El Nino already uh, looking to be a moderate to strong El Nino potentially as this is just looking very very intense and we have this negative PDO here, as you can see, this has nothing to do with the hurricane season, but I'm just feel like pointing it out. This has encouraged a lot of cold air onto the west coast of North America, and that played a huge role in that why last winter was so cold in the west and so warm in the east. I think that PDO played a very, very large role in that. Now, here's the seven day change, and as you can see, uh, this PDO has been flipping and it is expected to flip throughout the uh, summer, fall, and winter. Uh, but the El Nino here is, is not developed that much over the last seven days, but it's already, you know, well on its way. So that doesn't really matter. We do expect that to continue developing, though, over time. We see this MDR has been warming. We've seen some cooling in the Atlantic here, but we've seen a significant amount of warming offshore of the southeast and Gulf. We're going to keep you guys up to date with this. We're going to keep tracking all of this and hopefully be bringing maybe biweekly updates here on the hurricane season is what I want to do. I know a lot of you along the coasts are very concerned about this. Now back to the charts. I know this video is all over the place. I actually didn't mean for it to be that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm using my just photos in my computer right now. And it just, it just displayed them in a different order than I made it, told it to. I don't know why. Uh, it just goes to show that computers have a mind of their own these days. Uh, Gulf of Mexico sea surface temperatures has been a roller coaster, as you can see. Kind of up, down, up down up but i can't help but feel like the trend is negative at this point but we are warming this could kind of turn around this isn't a stock this is a 
you know, part of the world. So this obviously doesn't really care about the past. It's only what happens from this point and moving forward that matters. So we'll see what happens with this. We could see a lot of warming after this point, but it got as close as to neutral as possible there, right around the 3rd of May or just after. But we've seen warming since then. Very curious how that's going to play out. As we take a look here, which one is this? This is the Atlantic MDR. You can see we were negative or neutral. I'll actually try to draw a straighter line than that here. Yeah, so there's the neutral line. As you can see, we were very close to that neutral line up until about late April, the last time I made my update. And since then, we've seen this massive warming trend in the MDR to where now we're looking at far above average sea surface temperatures throughout that entire MDR. That is gonna play a huge role and has me seriously concerned. Again, maybe looking at more average development in the MDR, even with the El Nino and the increased shear. So that would be absolutely crazy to think about. The North Atlantic overall uh, has been pretty far above average, but we've seen kind of a downtrend. It recently has rallied, but again, on the way down again. So we'll have to see in our next update what this ends up landing and looking like. Here's that Nino 3.4 index, which is the, the one they use to basically measure if we're in an El Nino or a La Nina. As you can see, we've gone from La Nina in February all the way up past neutral. We were only in neutral for maybe three months total. So we're now we're already into a week approaching moderate La El Nino now. So this is a very sharp increase, as you can see. We'll have to see where this ends up plateauing at, but this is currently with the momentum. Again, the past does not really matter. But with the momentum right now, this does not appear to stop anytime soon increasing. So we, we will see this plays a big time role in uh, the upcoming weather. Let me know if you'd like just an El Nino video in general talking about the El Nino and giving you guys an update on that. I wonder if you guys would like some world weather videos. That would be very interesting. So let me know down below if you guys want some of that. We're going to be updating you guys bi-weekly on the hurricane season. If you guys would like to see anything more about the hurricane season, again, leave comments down below and I'll be sure to implement those in these videos if there's any other factors or maps or anything you guys want to see pertaining to hurricane season that I kind of missed here, let me know. Again, be sure to check out the trilogy maps that's going to be in uh, the description and pinned comment down below. So be sure to check those out, guys. Uh, subscribe. We're going to be uploading daily, of course, as always for the United States and be doing these hurricane videos pretty pretty often, hopefully, is what I want to do. Uh, and you can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload. Also, be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.